Today we're going to begin with uh, straight line graphs again and uh, just to recap we're just going to look at things that we should recall from uh, the normal IGCC maths. Okay so that is if we have two points on a Cartesian plane P and Q if we want to calculate the line length the gradient or the coordinates of the midpoint okay, we have equations that we are already familiar with in order to calculate that right and then just to recap on straight lines okay if we have two lines that are parallel that means that their gradients will be equal to each other and then if we have lines that are perpendicular it means that if we take their gradients and multiply them together they should equal minus one right alternatively if the gradient of one line is m then the gradient of the other line is minus 1 over m. It's reciprocal, negative reciprocal. Right, and then obviously, just as a final thing, uh, recalling the equation of a straight line, y equal to mx plus c, so m being the gradient and c being the y intercept. We are going to look at a more efficient method or better equation for a straight line later on. Okay, so using these familiar equations, we can... Uh, work out more complex uh, problems involving line length and midpoint. So looking at the first problem here, it says we have two points, A and B, and it says find the length of AB. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to designate which one is going to be uh, point 1 and point 2, and so we can label uh, their coordinates appropriately. So we'll call this one 1 and this one 2, and so this becomes coordinate x1, y1, x2, y2. So it's important to specify uh, which one is point 1 and 2. All right, and from there it's quite easily. If we want to calculate the length of AB, we just need to remember the formula is the square root of x2 minus x1. In other words, the change in x squared plus y2 minus 1 my y1 squared that in other words change in y so that's the distance between the two points and this comes from pythagoras's theorem okay and we've already specified which one is x2 and x1 and so that's quite easy we can just put them straight into the equation and so a b is equal to the square root x2 is 6 and we're going to subtract negative 3, so minus, minus 3, so always put a minus number in brackets, so you can see the double negative, plus y2, which is minus 2, minus 7, squared, and from here you can just do the arithmetic, okay, so if you punch all of that into your calculator, you end up with 9 square root 2, and that's the length of that line. Right, part B says calculate the midpoint, okay? So if we want to calculate the midpoint for a line, okay, so the midpoint of AB, right, it is x1 plus x2 over 2 as a coordinate, right? So we add the points together and divide by 2, so we share, and y1 plus y2 over 2 for the y coordinate, okay? And from here we can just put the values once again in. Okay, so we're going to have minus 3 plus 6 all over 2. And for the y coordinate, we're going to have 7 plus minus 2 all over 2. And simplifying, we're going to get 3 over 2 and 5 over 2. All right, so we should be familiar with problems like this. These are the same kind of problems that you could have expected in IGCSE at extended level. So now let's look at a more complex problem. So in this equation, we are told that the distance between two points, P and Q, is 15. Okay, and we're given the two coordinates, and we notice that in the coordinates, two of the... Uh, one of the y coordinates and one of the x coordinates is some constant a, and we need to find this value. Okay, we're also very importantly we are told the distance between the two points. So what we normally do is we start off by writing down the formula that we are 
uh, equating. And so we are using distance, so we're going to write down the distance formula. And that happens to be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right? But the important thing is we know that pq is equal to 15. All right? So instead of writing pq, we can actually substitute the fact that we know it is 15. And then we can also just substitute our other points in. So we can specify this being 1 and this being 2, for instance. And that makes this x1 and this y1. And this is then x2 and this is y2. All right? So let's replace all the things we know. We know PQ is 15. Right? We know X2 is equal to A plus 1. And X1 is minus 7. Well, it's 7, so minus 7. All squared. And this is plus Y2 is 9. Minus Y1 is A. All squared. And from here, it's just a standard quadratic. So to get rid of the square root or the radical, we can square both sides. I'm going to switch things around. So we're going to get a minus 6 squared plus 9 minus a squared equal to 225. Now we need to expand both brackets out. And then we need to uh, uh, simplify and solve. So we'll get a squared minus 12a plus 36 plus 81 minus 18a plus a squared equal to 225. So a is equal to 18 or a is equal to minus 3. All right, let's have a look at another kind of question. All right, here we are asked to get, we have the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment AB. All right. We're given the two points. The coordinates of the second point are two constant unknowns. And we are told what the midpoint is. Okay, so usually we're asked to find the midpoint. Here we have the midpoint and one other point, And we need to calculate the second point. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start off by writing what is the formula that we need. And if we want to calculate the midpoint of AB, Right, it would be x2 plus x1 over 2 and y2 plus y1 over 2. And we know that the midpoint of AB is equal to 2.5 and minus 6. Okay, so if we'd had to work out the midpoint, this is what we would have got. Okay, now again, we can start by saying which one is 1 and 2. So let's call this x1, and this is y1, and this is x2 and y2, and we'll re replace everything in the equation that we already know. Okay, so we're going to have p minus 5 over 2, and here we're going to have q plus 11 over 2. Okay, so what we do here is something a little bit different. We're going to compare the midpoint that we have with the equation that we're giving. So we're going to, we're going to equate the x-coordinate and we're going to equate the y-coordinate. So we're going to equate this part here and we're going to equate this part here because this gives us the midpoint of the x-coordinate but we have the midpoint of the x-coordinate already and this gives us the x the y coordinate and we have the y coordinate of the midpoint already so we can use that to solve for p and q so from that we know that p minus 5 over 2 must be equal to 2.5 therefore p minus 5 must be equal to 5 and so p must be equal to 10 in the same way, q plus 11 over 2 must be equal to minus 6. So q plus 11 can be equal to minus 12. And so q must be equal to minus 23. So now, not only are we able to calculate the midpoint, we are also able to calculate the coordinates of an 
the second point if we know one point and the midpoint. So on to the final question. We're asked, well, we're given three of the vertices of a parallelogram, A, B, C, and D. We have their coordinates, and the first thing we're asked to do is calculate the midpoint of A, C. Okay? So we'll have a look at A, C, and we'll say, well, I have the coordinates for A, and I have the coordinates for C, and so there shouldn't be any problems. So what we'll do is we're going to start off by writing the equation that we need. We want midpoint, so we can say the midpoint of AC is equal to, well, the x-coordinate is x2 plus x1 over 2, and the y-coordinate is y2 plus y1 over 2. So for AC, let's specify 1 and 2. That gives this x1, this is y1, and then this is x2, and this is y2. So we can substitute those into our equation and calculate the midpoint. So we have 14 minus 10 over 2, and we have 4 plus 1 over 2. This is going to give us the midpoint of AC as, well, it'll be 4 over 2, which is 2, and 5 over 2, which is two and a half. Part B says calculate the coordinates of D, okay? So we don't know what the coordinates of D are, and so just like in the previous example, what we'll do is we'll just give them some variables or a letter so we can calculate them. So for instance, we could say that point D is P slash Q. So X is P is the x-coordinate and Q is the y-coordinate, okay? Now, from here, we need to remember the, well, the principles of a parallelogram, okay? So if we have some parallelogram, we can draw one quickly. Right, one of the properties of a parallelogram is if I had to join the corners of a parallelogram, okay, you'll notice that they bisect at the same coordinate. Okay, so if, for instance, we had to label this as A, B, C, D, we just calculated the midpoint of A, C. And the important thing to note is that A, C also happens to be the midpoint of B, D. Okay. So let's look at that. We want to say, well, the midpoint of B, D will be same thing, x2 plus x1 all over 2, y2 plus y1 all over 2. But we know that the midpoint of B, D must be the same as the midpoint of A, C, because it's the midpoint of a parallelogram. Okay, And we know that to be the point 2, 2.5. And so just like the previous example, we're going to put everything that we know about BD into the equation, and then we're going to equate the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates. So we'll have to go to B. So let's we're working with B and D this time. So let's call B1 and let's call D2. So here we have x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2. Right, always important to just write them down. So we said x2 will be p, and x1 is 6 all over 2, and y2 is q, and y1 is minus 2 all over 2. And so now we can compare coefficients, or not coefficients, coordinates. So this is the must be the x-coordinate, and this must be the y-coordinate. So we can say p plus 6 over 2 must be equal to 2. p plus 6 must be equal to 4. And so p must be equal to minus 2. And q minus 2 over 2 must be equal to 2.5. So q minus 2 must be equal to 5. And so q must be equal to 7. So the coordinates to finish off the Coordinates of point D are minus 2 and 7.